This is Module 6, Crimes Against the Community and Public Order, Part 2, Public Morality Crimes and Drug and Alcohol-Related Offenses. Our sources for this portion of the lecture are the textbook of Criminal Law for Criminal Justice Professionals, Louisiana Revised Statutes Title 14, and Louisiana Revised Statutes Title 40. Public order and uh, safety offenses are meant to protect the general public to address behavior that affects the peace and safety of the community, but they're not essentially morally wrong. Uh, mala prohibita is a Latin term that means that the law di dictates the, that the act is wrong, as opposed to mala in save, which is the Latin term for um, uh, acts that are inherently wrong. In public order and safety offenses, mens rea is not required for these crimes, only the actus reus. Offenses uh, that create a public disturbance are based in the common law. Uh, some of these uh, common law crimes included unlawful assembly, which is the gathering of three or more persons, with the common intent to achieve a lawful or unlawful purpose in a tumultuous manner. Uh, this uh, an unlawful assembly may begin as a lawful assembly and turn uh, into an unlawful um, assembly. A rout is an unlawful assembly that is escalating, uh, but does not match the level of a, of a riot um, or, or an attempt, it's actually an attempted riot it requires a specific intent to riot. A riot is an unlawful assembly in which the peace is breached and terrorizing the public occurs. Disorderly conduct is another common law offense uh, in which a behavior that disturbs the safety, health, or moral of others uh, is undertaken and, and that it's in, intended to annoy another person. Vagrancy means to be idle, to wander without any visual means of support. Um, and, and many states have repealed vagrancy laws due to, to, due to their constitutionality. Nuisances are anything that endangers the life or health, gives offense to the senses, violates laws of decency, or obstructs the reasonable and comfortable use of property. Other crimes against the public order include traffic offenses. Uh, we all know uh, common traffic offenses like speeding, uh, reckless driving, uh, failure to stop at a stop sign or a red light. Um, a hit and run is uh, another crime against public order and driving with a suspended license. Driving under the influence uh, is a uh, traffic offense in terms of, uh, of being a crime against the public order in which a, a uh, vehicle is operated um, under the influence of uh, an intoxicant, a narcotic or hallucinogenic, which has impaired the faculties of the, of the operator. Uh, the operator is operating a motor vehicle on a roadway and the, the offender's blood alcohol level is above a prohibited level such as uh, 0 0.08 grams per cent or 0 0.10 grams per cent. You have some associated uh, driving under the influence crimes uh, that uh, to be considered like vehicular manslaughter, vehicular negligent injuring, and, and vehicular homicide. Uh, crimes against the public order also include weapons offenses. Uh, and there are certain circumstances that constitute a weapons offense. Maybe the possessor of the weapon is under age. Uh, the weapon is, is unregistered, uh, whether it be a, le a legal weapon or an illegal weapon. Uh, the location where the weapon was discovered is, is a circumstance, whether it was in a vehicle or on uh, uh, the person uh, without permission to carry it there. Um, a weapons offense could include uh, possession or transportation of explosives, firearms, ammunition, uh, with the intent that it be used to commit a crime. Um, 
another weapons offense, a circumstance uh, constituting a weapons offense would be placing another person in fear of that weapon uh, or offensive bodily contact with the weapon and then using the firearm as a weapon, whether it's loaded or not. Uh, in terms of weapons offenses, uh, a, a deadly or dangerous weapon is, is defined as, as any weapon that's subject to designation by the court. Uh, for example, a gun, a sword, a knife, a chisel, a large stone or rock, uh, heavy iron weights, or even an automobile can be classified as a deadly or dangerous weapon. Uh, firearms or any weapon that can expel a projectile uh, by action of an explosive, the frame or receiver of such a weapon, and any firearm muffler or firearm silencer. Assault weapons are defined as rifles with uh, conspicuous pistol grips, pistols with shrouds, and shotguns with higher ammunition uh, capacities. Federal law includes a list of specific assault weapons models and duplicates and a generic all-inclusive category that covers certain characteristics of firearms. The Firearms Owners Protection Act regulates commerce of firearms uh, like pistols, rifles, and shotguns, as well as uh, hand grenades, silencers, bazookas, and deceptive weapons. State firearms laws generally uh, attempt to protect the rights of citizens, uh, but also prohibit possession by felons and oftentimes require licensing and permitting to carry weapons concealed. Uh, public morality offenses uh, include obscenity, uh, the legal de definition of which is the materials that uh, are not protected under the First Amendment, uh, including books, magazines, newspapers, pictures, drawings, photos, films, statues, and recordings. Uh, under the federal law, there's a, there's a few tests uh, that had been used in the past and some current tests. Uh, the Hicklin test was an early test that was focused on the entire work and the effect that it would have on an average person. Uh, the tripartite test uh, has, has indicated that material is obscene if it has no social importance. Um, and does the material on the whole excite any type of lustful thoughts? And its only intent is a shameful or morbid interest in sex, which is known as a, a, pu a prurient interest. Um, the current test uses three guidelines. Uh, would the average person applying the standards of the community, would that average uh, person find the work appealing to, to prurient interest? Uh, does the work depict or describe in an offensive manner uh, sexual conduct specifically de uh, defined by state law? And does the work lack any literary, artistic, political, or scientific value? Uh, in terms of obscenity, um, obscenity in the internet has become uh, a major focus of law enforcement. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult task uh, to, to police and prosecute. Uh, the challenge is to prevent, of course, children from seeing materials, but on the other hand, protect First Amendment rights of adults. Uh, most states have some type of uh, statute that prohibits production, distribution, display, and possession with uh, uh, obscene materials with the intent to sell it. Uh, and of course, federal laws prohibit distribution of obscene materials across state lines and even by uh, computer. The focus of recent legislation has primarily targeted the transportation, uh, the tra excuse me, the transmission of obscene materials to minors. And of course, within this realm of obscenity, uh, we have to discuss uh, child pornography. Uh, the child pornography industry is highly organized, uh, multi-billion dollars of revenue uh, each year and it spans uh, 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 boundaries. It's an international uh, industry. Um, the Protection of Children from Sexual Ex Exploitation Act of 1977 prohibited the production of any sexually explicit material 
using a child under the age of 16. However, in 1984, um, uh, it, th this law was revised, uh, which eliminated uh, conditions which protected people under commerce and uh, uh, the obscenity test requirements were altered and then ultimately raised the age uh, to, to 18 years of old, uh, 18 years of age uh, in which uh, uh, a child under 18 was prohibited uh, from being um, uh, in, in any sexually explicit materials. Indecent exposure is another public morality offense. Um, this is the unlawful exposure of the human body, uh, particularly the genitals and female breast. Uh, this, this law is an attempt to protect uh, the sensibilities of the public and to prevent um, a rash of, of, of public lewdness. Um, indecent exposure can occur on a street, in a building, on a beach, or even in a private location if viewing of that private location is possible from a public area or another private place. Other uh, public morality, offense, uh, morality offenses uh, include prostitution, solicitation, and pandering. Uh, of course, prostit prostitution is when a person agrees to engage and any sexual or deviant sexual intercourse in return for something of value, which is usually money, uh, could be drugs or any other type uh, of, of object of value, either tangible or intangible. Um, it's a statutory crime uh, that, that not always consists of the act itself. Uh, the agreement to uh, to perform an act for money or for anything of value can constitute the crime as well. And then a, a piece of federal level legislation uh, known as the Mann Act uh, prohibited the interstate transportation of, of females for uh, prostitution activities. Solicitation is the offer to pay another or to receive payment from another, another for sex. Uh, this is meant to address uh, prostitutes from standing in public places in an attempt to uh, entice uh, customers. Uh, pandering is the uh, procuring a female uh, for a place of prostitution or procuring a place for a prostitute to work. Uh, in terms of pandering, uh, sexual activity is not a requirement. Uh, and of course, pandering is closely related to, um, to pimping, uh, which is the promotion of, of prostitution. Other public morality of offenses include uh, so sodomy and the related offenses to sodomy. Under the modern law, this generally includes uh, consensual or non-consensual uh, deviate oral or anal sexual intercourse with a person. Uh, some states include uh, a vaginal oral or anal anal intercourse with an animal if no bestiality laws exist in that state. Gambling is a significant uh, uh, crime uh, to discuss in terms of public morality. Uh, gambling is defined that when a person stakes or risks something of value on the outcome of a contest or a game of chance or even on a future event of chance that's not under his or her control or influence. And examples of gambling include uh, track racing, whether it be horses, uh, dogs, um, uh, any type of lotteries, uh, video betting machines, uh, sweepstakes, uh, gambling tournaments, uh, bingo, and various uh, card games. Betting and wagering applies to all forms of gambling except lotteries. Uh, and, and in order for gambling to be illegal, the form of gambling that's being conduct, conducted must be prohibited by statute. Uh, most of the illegal forms of gambling um, include uh, lotteries, uh, horse racing or dog racing, uh, bingo, uh, video poker, and licensed casinos, whether the casino be uh, a land-based casino or uh, riverboat casinos that are prominent in, um, in Louisiana, uh, Missouri, and other states. Uh, friendly gambling uh, activities like 
office pools, football pools, uh, fantasy sports, neighborhood car games, those are all, all considered to be legal uh, gambling um, and, and non-intrusive on public morality. <clears throat> and now we, we'll shift our focus to drug and alcohol related crimes. Uh, in terms of drug crimes, uh, it's important to understand what a controlled substance is. A controlled substance is any uh, psychoactive or bioactive chemical substance that's strictly related or made illegal because of its potential for abuse or addiction. Psychoactive drugs are, are those that alter the mind or, or the behavior, and bioactive drugs are those that, uh, that affect the body. Um, the different types of, of drugs, the different categories of controlled substances include uh, stimulants, which uh, have a tendency to produce arousal, alertness, or excitability and reduce fatigue in the user. Some examples of stimulants include amphetamines, methamphetamines, cocaine, caffeine, nicotine, and other uh, prescription uh, stimulant drugs. Depressants are are, are narcotic and non-narcotic com compounds that can slow down activity in the central nervous system. It can, can produce uh, drowsiness, relaxation, and sleep in the user. Uh, these drugs include opiates like opium, morphine, heroin, uh, codeine, and other uh, prescription uh, depressant drugs, but also includes alcohol, uh, barbiturates, and tranquilizers. Another type of drugs, uh, category of drugs is hallucinogens. These act on the central nervous system to cause some type of visual or auditory hallucination. Uh, drugs like LSD, PCP, uh, mescaline and peyote, uh, psilocybin, uh, which those three are, are naturally occurring. And then sy synthetic drugs that are uh, designed to, to produce hallucinogenic effects. Marijuana is another category uh, and includes not only the leaves, uh, but the tops of the, the cannabis sativa plant or, or what's commonly known as the hemp plant. Uh, marijuana fits into to, uh, three categories uh, as a hallucinogen, a stimulant, and a depressant. And of course, uh, a great debate in the last several years has, uh, has been undertaken as states are adopting both medical and recreational uh, programs. Uh, all the while, uh, marijuana remains uh, um, as a federal controlled su substance. Another category of drugs are inhalants. Uh, these are classified due to the method of use. Uh, drugs like amyl nitrate are, are considered poppers and nitrous oxide, or, or what we know as laughing gas, but also can include household chemicals like bath salts and paint. Uh, within uh, the drug realm are uh, designer drugs, uh, which are uh, designed to mimic the effects of known illegal drugs. These uh, uh, common drugs include uh, ecstasy or MDMA and, and rofenol or roofies. Steroids are natural and synthetic hormones that promote cell and muscle growth. Uh, steroids have medical uses, uh, of course, uh, but they are also used uh, non-medically to, to enhance performance amongst athletes. From the 1800s uh, to our present day, there's been a series of drug legislation in the United States um, that attempted to address different issues uh, in, the, in the uses of drugs and the sale of drugs. Um, it was legal uh, to distribute and sell narcotics, uh, especially opium, morphine, heroin, and cocaine uh, at certain times in our, our country's history, uh, and they had common uses. Um, but federal legislation uh, sought to restrict uh, some of the use and sale, as I said earlier. Uh, there were restrictions on uh, smoking opium at one point in time, but, but drinking 
uh, a liquid form of the substance remain legal. Uh, in 1906, uh, the Federal Pure Food and Drug Act required labels to specify the amount of drugs in a product, uh, including the levels of opium, morphium, morphine, uh, heroin, alcohol, marijuana, and cocaine. Uh, the Harrison Narcotics Act in 1914 required persons that were dealing in narcotics or cocaine to register with the government and pay a tax. And in 1937, the Marijuana Tax Act imposed taxes on marijuana, uh, declared cannabis a narcotic, and placed penalties on the use and distribution of marijuana. The most significant uh, uh, drug control act uh, was, was drafted in 1970, which is known as the Uniform Controlled Substances Act. The goal of, of the, uh, the Uniform Controlled Substances Act was to achieve uniformity uh, between the state, the states and federal drug laws. But as we know, uh, there's still significant variance uh, between the two. Within uh, the, the Uniform, Uniform Controlled Substance Act, uh, manufacture or delivering a controlled substance was, was prohibited. It was illegal to possess with intent to manufacture or deliver a controlled substance, to create, deliver, or possess with intent to deliver a counterfeit substance, uh, to offer or agree to deliver a controlled substance and deliver and dispense a controlled substance. It became illegal just simply to possess a controlled substance and to knowingly keep or maintain a store for persons to illegally use a controlled substance and to acquire by misrepresentation, fraud, forgery, or deception any controlled uh, substance. This act in 1970 divided uh, controlled substances into five schedules, schedules one through five, and drugs were placed in the schedule uh, based on their potential for abuse, the danger that the drug posed to the user, and whether or not the uh, drug had any type of medical use. Uh, the war on drugs uh, was a significant policy um, venture by the federal government in the 1980s and was a response to the significant rise in drug use uh, from the 1960s uh, through the 1980s. The war on drugs became a punitive approach to possession and the sale of, of illegal drugs uh, and, and brought about a reduction in funding for treatment programs, but alternatively uh, got tougher on mandatory sentencing for small amounts of drugs, including cocaine. The proponents of the war on drugs wanted longer prison terms for users, dealers, suppliers, smugglers, and manufacturers. Under current policy, uh, prohibition, zero tolerance, and harsher penalties uh, have been acknowledged to have limited success. Uh, they're expensive, and they've created profits for, for dealers even more, created prison overcrowding, and provided opportunities for police corruption. There's been a call uh, as a move away from prohibition and zero tolerance to uh, a more medical and therapeutic approach, uh, a move toward decriminalization of, of drug use and drug possession, uh, legalization of some drugs, especially marijuana, and providing support and advocacy for, for addicts. The most common drug offenses include uh, possession. Uh, it's the most common criminal drug charge. Uh, and this, this can uh, take the form of actual possession where it's recovered on the defendant's person. Constructive possession, which is immediately accessible to the accused, or there's this exercise of dominion and control. Knowing possession um, means that uh, mens rea must accompany the act of possession. Uh, meaning that the accused must know that he or she's in possession of the substance and know it's illegal. Uh, and the irrelevance of the amount uh, is, is a factor within possession. Most states don't require a minimum amount of the drug to be 
uh, for a, uh, a defender, a defendant to be charged with the crime, even even a residue of of a particular drug can satisfy an amount. Uh, and of course, possession with intent to deliver. This can be circumstantially proven by a possession of a large a quantity of drugs uh, worth a, a large quantity of, of, um, of cash or possession of manufacturing or, or packaging items like scales, bags, uh, rolling papers and, and the like. The delivery of a controlled substance is, is a drug offense as well. Uh, this is the voluntary transfer of a controlled substance from one person to another. And this particular uh, uh, type of uh, offense is geared towards suppliers. Uh, drug conspiracy is an agreement between two or more persons with the intent to manufacture and then and or to distri distribute the drugs. Uh, drug loitering is an action done in public in order to engage drug activity. Uh, this can be the presence, possession, or, or delivery uh, is not required uh, to prove the crime of drug loitering. Uh, transportation is a prohi prohibition uh, on transportation of a controlled substance in a vehicle. Uh, cultivation of marijuana uh, is, a, is a drug offense, uh, but there, the proof must exist that the defendant knew the plants were cannabis and were growing on his or her property. And then drug paraphernalia, which is any equipment, product, or material that's intended or designed for use. Things like bongs, pipes, uh, rolling paper, scales, and needles can constitute uh, drug paraphernalia. Alcohol offenses uh, are another significant uh, crime uh, in this country. Uh, prohibition began in the states in the mid 1800s. Uh, and at that time, federal legislation only dealt with the regulation and taxing of alcohol. Uh, in 1917, with the 18th Amendment, you see the prohibition on the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol. And, and two years later, the Volstead Act uh, uh, took the 18th Amendment and, and added some enforcement procedures uh, to finally implement prohibition. What the response was to prohibition was uh, high alcohol production illegally, um, increased consumption, and increased alcoholism. Uh, th this was going on in the early part of the century, especially following World War I. Um, you know, the, the nation was undergoing um, a, um, a trend toward uh, prohibition. The byproduct of prohibition was uh, increased in bootlegging, uh, gangs, uh, organized crime that were associated with with the production and transportation and sale of, of alcohol, illegal alcohol. Uh, you had police corruption and, and underground uh, drinking establishments being, uh, being uh, established, uh, what we know is, is what's called speakeasies. Uh, by 1933, uh, the 21st Amendment repealed prohibition and established some regulatory procedures for uh, the, the manufacture transportation and sale of alcohol. Uh, there are several alcohol-related offenses uh, beyond uh, uh, what's regulated, what the sale, transportation, and distribution uh, uh, offenses, uh, especially in terms of driving under the influence. And, and driving under the influence crimes across uh, the country have different names. Um, uh, some may be driving under the influence or DUI, some are driving while intoxicated, DWI. You may have OUI or OWI, which is operating under the influence or operating while intoxicated. It all depends on uh, what the particular state names uh, these offenses. Uh, in terms of intoxication, uh, this occurs when a person has ingested enough alcohol um, or drugs so that his or her physical and mental controls are diminished or their judgment and ability to operate a motor vehicle are adversely affected. Uh, states specify the level of intoxication by alcohol content in the blood or urine. And the, this alcohol content is determined by 
uh, any any number of tests, including a breath test, blood test, urine, or even a saliva test. Uh, blood alcohol content or blood alcohol concentration is referred to as BAC. Uh, most, de most states designate uh, 0 0.08 grams percent as the legal limit, uh, while other states maintain uh, 0 0.10 grams percent. Um, the states that have reduced their level to 0 0.08 grams percent uh, did so at the behest of, of continuing to receive uh, federal funding for local law enforcement. Uh, some states have uh, what's, uh, what's termed zero tolerance for those under the age of 21, uh, but zero tolerance has a couple different meanings in different states. Some states, uh, zero tolerance means 0 0.00 grams percent of alcohol. You can't have any alcohol in your system. And then some states define zero tolerance uh, as 0 0.02 grams percent. Um, the elements of, of a DUI offense include that the defendant operated a motor vehicle on a roadway. Uh, some states uh, have, have designate a motorized means of, of conveyance uh, in their definition which can be anything from a, 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 a vehicle uh, to a lawnmower, to a four-wheeler, a utility vehicle, uh, to a motorized bike. Uh, the second element is that the defendant was under the influence of an intoxicant, narcotic, or hallucinogenic, and his or her faculties were impaired, and that the defendant's BAC was above the prohibited level for that jurisdiction. Uh, DUI statutes uh, requires that drivers submit to a blood, breath, or urine test to determine their BAC or presence of a controlled substance. Um, there's there's this, this term uh, within DUI statutes is, is uh, implied consent. What this means is that by a person being given the privilege of driving, uh, the driver consents to being uh, tested uh, submitting to a chemical test when they're arrested for a DUI. Uh, there are penalties that go along with refusing to submit uh, to, to a chemical test, which includes uh, uh, increased or additional fines, uh, imprisonment, and suspension of driving privileges. There are some uh, defenses uh, within um, the criminal justice system uh, uh, attributed to intoxication and alcoholism. Um, voluntary intoxication is not a defense in general intent crimes, but can you be used to uh, disprove uh, a mens rea or intent in specific intent crimes. Uh, intoxication uh, may be a mitigating factor in certain crimes because it may eliminate premeditation and deliberation elements. Uh, and an alcoholism may show that the defendant was intoxicated to the point that he or she was physically incapable of the crime. In module six, you learn to define the types of white, white collar crime, explain the distinctions between the most common traffic offenses, define offenses of the public morality, list the major categories of controlled dangerous substances, and then explain the elements of driving under the influence or driving while intoxicated.